Okay, in this video we're just going to review some things, slope fields and, uh, and trapezoid rule stuff. Uh, so drawing the slope field for x squared, y squared, um, you know, I'm going to try and do this kind of quickly. So I want to point out that first of all, whenever x is 0, okay, so whenever x is 0, we'll have a slope of 0. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, also whenever y is 0, we'll have a slope of zero. We'll put that in, okay? Next, um, if when x, let's start with kind of the, the um, you know, one, one type stuff here. So if x is one and y is one, of course we have a slope of one because one squared times one squared. But also that works for any time either of them are negative because of the squaring. So every single one of these spots has a slope of positive 1. Okay, so let's now go to, uh, let's finish it off here. So if uh, x was negative 1, but y was 2, we have negative 1 squared times 2 squared. That would also be the same if x was positive 1. So this is very steep, it's 4. It looks like that. Okay. Those will be the same slopes that occur here at negative 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 1, and at 2, 1, and 2, negative 1. Okay, that'd be the same slope. And finally, these points 2, 2, and 2, negative 2, 2, well, squaring those, we'd end up with 4 times 4. I mean, this is almost going to appear vertical because it's a slope of 16, so something like that. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to make a table uh, of values. Um, this works pretty well. All right, air is escaping from a balloon at that rate where its T is measured in minutes. How much? Okay, I just wanted to remind you, if we have a rate and we want to get to how much, we need to integrate the rate. Okay, I'm not even going to calculate it. In the interest of time, I'll rely on the fact that you could do that. But to get from the rate to how much, we integrate. Okay, again, I want to just do another uh, quick slope field. Um, and I'm, I'm not even going to make a table this time. So I just want you to notice when x is 0, we'll have a slope of 0, other than when y is 0. And then it would be kind of an undefined slope. So I'm going to just leave that out, okay? So, okay. Now, uh, let's start with some points like here we've got negative 1, 1. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1, but then we have this that changes the sign to positive. Okay. If you continued this around, it would look like that. All right, let me go to the next spot, which would be negative 1, 2. So negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half, but this makes it positive. Okay. Uh, next. Let's go to negative 2, 1. So negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2, but that makes it positive. And again, you might have to, you know, you've got to probably take more time with this. I'm just in the interest of time building it pretty quickly. And this last one would look like that. Now the reason I wanted to show you this one is because I think most people look at that and say, boy, that looks like a circle. And remember, we talked about the fact that slope fields are really useful for finding uh, equations, or I'm sorry, uh, estimating what a, an original function would look like when you don't know uh, the original equation. And in fact, this is a circle, and we do have a way to work backwards. So I wanted to show you that real quick, and this is not something you're responsible for knowing yet, but it's kind of a nice thing to look at. I'm going to cross multiply. So I end up with y dy equals negative x dx. Okay, very algebraic. I just got all the x stuff together and all the y stuff together. Now I integrate. Well, the antiderivative of negative x is negative 1 half x squared plus a constant. The antiderivative of y is 1 half y squared plus a constant. Now, a quick note here. We write this constant. That's just some constant. This is not a variable. The constants on each side may not be the same. It's just a placeholder for a constant. Okay. 
Next, I multiply both. I'm going to multiply both sides, everything by two. That's uh, and you'll see why here in a moment. So I've got y squared plus now two multiplied by any constant is a new constant. So the other side will be this. Now again, I'm just going to make a little note here under the constant. I could have written two c. But again, if it's two times a constant, we're just using c as a placeholder for a constant. Two times a constant is a new constant. Okay. I'm going to subtract c from both sides. So I have y squared equals negative x squared plus a constant. Because a constant minus a constant is some new constant. Okay, I'm going to add x squared to both sides. X squared plus y squared equals c. This is the equation for a circle. You learned that in pre-calc. Uh, it's x squared plus y squared equals radius squared. So this is a circle with a radius equal to the square root of c. Okay, so there is a way to work back. And again, you don't need to be responsible for that yet, but it's useful to look at. All right, last. Uh, we've got a table about a car's velocity during a car trip. Um, so you can see we've got time, we've got the miles per hour. Estimate the acceleration at time 0.15. Well, acceleration, remember, is the derivative of velocity. I'm just going to write derivative. Uh, let me do this in a different notation. It takes less space. It's uh, V prime. Okay, So it's estimating the slope at, of velocity. Easiest way to do that is pick the thing on either side and find the slope. So difference in y's over difference in x's. So 6 divided by 0.1 is 60 miles per hour squared. Okay, now this is, you know, if you had some graph and you said, I want to know the slope right here, okay, easy way to do that is pick a spot on either side and draw a line through that. Um, and that's what we just did. Okay, so we just used the point on either side. Okay, next, uh, using a trapezoid sum, estimate how far the car traveled. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is integrate. Because, of course, to get from the velocity to how far we integrate velocity. Um, so, you know, we'd have one half, since we're using a trapezoid sum, the first base would be 35, the second base would be 40, and we multiply that by how far apart they are, that's 0.1. The next trapezoid would be a uh, base of 40. Base 1 is 40, base 2 is 44, and the diff and the how far apart they are is 0 0.05. Now I'm going to run out of room. Uh, I, I think you can handle that. It's just, of course, uh, five trapezoids, and you would add those up. You would get an answer of 20.5 five miles. Okay? All right, using the same sum from the above problem, estimate the average. Well, average velocity means we do the 1 over b minus a, so for us it's 0.5 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 0.5 of v of t dt. So essentially we take our 20.55 that we got above we divide it by 0.5, we get 40, oh, 41.1, excuse me, um, miles per hour. Okay. Finally, using the table, find the value of v prime. Now this looks tricky because you know it's saying integrate acceleration. Well, I want you to think about this. If you have an equation and are asked to integrate it, you find the antiderivative and then plug in the the bounds and find the difference. So what is the antiderivative of v prime? Well, it's just v. So there's your antiderivative. 
then we plug in 0.5 and plug in 0. Well, V of 0.5, we can get from the table, it's 43. And V of 0, we can get from the table, it's 35. So I could just write 43 minus 35. So the answer is 8. And what's the meaning? Well, that's the difference in velocity from the beginning to end of the trip.